Ok, so last time we introduced the notion of Lebesgue integral for simple function, and then we try to extend, you know, we, we were about to extend this notion for bounded measurable function. So one fundamental proposition that we proved is the following. So you have f b a function defined on a set E with finite measure, uh, measurable, and we also assume the measure of E finite. Okay, then, uh, no, um, no, I'm sorry, <laughs> I was, we, okay, let me, not measurable, but bounded. Okay. Okay, then what we prove is that the upper and the lower um, Lebesgue integral coincide if and only if f is, is measurable, okay? Then the infimum over all the simple function psi which are greater than f of E psi is equal to the supremum over all the simple function phi which are larger than phi and um, the converse phi uh, so for all for all simple function phi and psi, if and only if, which in, it is indeed a, ca a characterization of measurable function, only if the function f is, uh, is measurable. Okay, so this has been proved last time. Okay, so as we observe, of course, now it's, it's, it's trivial how to define the Lebesgue, the, Lebesgue, the Lebesgue integral, okay? So we give the following definition. Okay, so we will say that if f is a bounded and measurable function define it on a measurable set, find it on E with E measurable, such that, of course, we always require now that the measure E is finite, then uh, we define the Lebesgue integral of F. As the infimum, for instance, over all the psi which are larger or equal than, than f. Okay? Okay. Now we see that uh, um, somehow this definition is a good one in the sense that uh, it contains uh, the definition of, uh, of Riemann integral. So if you, have, if you start from a function which is bounded and uh, which is Riemann uh, integrable, it is also the back integral, okay? Uh, okay, so proposition. So let f be a bounded, we have also to always to require that f is bounded function defined on an interval on 
AB. Then we have that if F is Riemann integrable over the interval, on AB, then it is measurable and we have that the two notions of integrals coincide. So the, the Riemann integral of AB of f of t t is equal to the uh, Lebesgue integral. So I, I denote the Lebesgue integral uh, putting the, the interval uh, um, at the bottom, f of x in dx. So this is the, the Riemann integral. Of course, and this is the Lebesgue integral. Okay, so the proof Okay, so we start by um, somehow the Riemann integral, okay? And we have that the Riemann integral. Actually, we start, so we know that f is Riemann integrable, so the upper and the lower Riemann integral must coincide. So we start by the, uh, by the lower Riemann integral, for instance. So AB of f of x in, in dx, this is uh, the lower uh, Riemann integral. So how we can go on now? We, I want to obtain to a bound from above of this. So I recall you that the Riemann integral is uh, defined as, um, okay, an infimum, so for instance, the, the, um, the lower Riemann integral is defined as the supremum over a uh, step function. But we know that step function are particular uh, simple function, okay? So you, you can somehow, from this observation, you can arrange some inequality uh, between the supremum, okay? So this is, this is a supremum, I recall this is a supremum over, um, over step function. Step function uh, phi less or equal than f. So it must be less or equal than the supremum over a larger class of functions, so simple function, so phi less than f, where well, this time phi are um, phi is a simple function, okay? Of a, b, phi, phi, x in dx. Okay, this is just because step function um, are contained in the class of the simple function. Okay, then you go. Oh, may I erase here? Yeah, here. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. F, uh, psi, yes. Psi is a, in this definition, psi is a simple function, no? I mean, this is the, the, the same term that appears in the proposition that we, okay? Psi is a simple function. Um, which is, um, so this infimum is taken over all the simple functions which are greater than f, okay? 
Okay. Uh, okay, I will erase here because I need space. Okay, so now we want to go on here. Uh, okay, I will. Uh, okay, we'll go on here. Less or equal. So how we can go on? Take the infimum. Now, for so you take the infimum over all the psi, which are larger or equal than f, a b. E of x in the x, this time psi is a class of uh, still a simple function, okay? Is a simple function. But then we uh, I psi, no? Ah, yeah, 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 sure, sure, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, yes. Yeah, thank you. Sure. Okay, and now we want to come back to the to the Riemann integral. Okay. Okay. So again, observing that the, this uh, this inclusion holds, that this is less or equal than the infimum uh, taken over all the psi. This time, psi is a step function. So actually, I'm taking the infimum over a, a smaller class, so I get something bigger in general. Okay, something. The quantity I get is larger, okay? Over f psi is a, uh, is a step function, okay? Okay, so this is uh, a b um, psi x dx, and this is precisely the, the upper Riemann integral, okay? Okay, the upper Riemann integral is the not. But we know that eh, f is, is Riemann integrable, so th all these inequality are indeed equality, okay, because uh, the, the first term and the, and the last term are equal, coincide, so even in particular these, these two coincide, okay? So from this, since okay, since f is a Riemann integral, we have that the uh, these two uh, coincide, and so from this we have that also the quantity uh, in between coincide. Okay, so the supremum over uh, okay phi phi phi. Uh, simple function of f uh, over e is equal to the infimum over psi, psi lar larger than f over e psi coincide. Okay, so what we get is that f, um, from the proposition before, we know that f is, uh, is measurable is measurable, then it is Lebesgue integrable, and then uh, from this we know that the two uh, the, the two integral coincide. Okay, measurable, then it is f is Lebesgue <coughs> integrable, and uh, we have that the Riemann integral of f coincide with the Lebesgue integral of f. Okay. So somehow this should convince you that 
introducing this new notion of integral, we somehow generalized the, the concept of, of Riemann integral. Okay, now what we want to prove is that uh, this definition of, of Lebesgue integral for bounded function uh, satisfies some the usual property, so it's, it's linear, uh, mon monotonicity, and so on. Okay. Copy this part. Okay. okay. So we have that let we have F and G to function uh, bounded defined then the measure of E must be finite uh, bounded and of course measurable Okay, then we have that the following properties holds. Oh, no. Property I is uh, the linearity. Take any A, B in R and you have that the, the, linear co the integral of the linear combination is the linear combination of the integral. Okay, then uh, you have 2I is, uh, okay, we have that if these two functions coincide almost everywhere in E, then also their Lebesgue integral must coincide. Third one is um, monotonicity property. Okay, this time you have instead of the equality, you have that if f is less than g, but it's enough that it is satisfies uh, almost everywhere in E. Okay, then the inequality is of course is preserved by the by the integral, by the big integral. Uh, okay, moreover, you have from this, you have also that um, the absolute values of the integral is less or equal than the integral of the absolute values of the function, okay? Okay. And then there are four, there are five uh, points of for you have that if you know that uh, our function, the function f, is in between two constant, capital A and capital B, then what you can imagine is that the integral of f is in between A times the measure of E, less or equal the integral of f, less or equal B times the measure of E. And the last one tells you that if uh, at this time with a, b, I denote to set here are two constant. If a, b are uh, disjoint measurable set, uh, with finite measure, Then uh, we have that 
they, the Lebesgue integral over the union of, uh, of these two sets is equal of the sum is equal to the sum of the Lebesgue integral on each um, on each set. Okay. Here are set. Huh? In e, yeah, 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 are in e, yeah, are, um, a, B, R. Yes. So you don't need to Yeah, 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 with finite measure, but I mean, if E, e is, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yes, yeah, sure. Here, I don't remember, maybe in, in Royden, this part is, uh, they say that maybe E is zero outside of a bounded set. No? This is why maybe uh, sometimes I, I, I stress that um, in these cases you can take A, B uh, in R and uh, a part of them is uh, this part outside this uh, this set of measure where they are zero. Okay, but just just uh, just think that they are in in E, so you don't need, as you observe, to to require that that they are. It's automatically verified, of course. Okay. Okay, so we start by point I, and okay, we trivially observe that uh, if you have a simple function, so we need to, to start by our building blocks that are simple function, A times a simple function is still a simple function, okay. Okay, so start for uh, the case where A is positive, okay. Okay, so we have E, A, times f is equal to the infimum of e a c and here you have that c that you equal an f because this is equivalent to the fact that a c is larger or equal than a f okay Okay, then for simple function, you can take this outside the infimum, A infimum of E psi, psi large or equal to F. Okay, and this is by definition, it is A E F. Okay, when you have A negative, this is the case positive. negative okay so you have e i f is equal to okay the infimum we start by the infimum of a phi larger than a f and this is here in this case the the inequality is reversed because a has is negative this is e a Okay, you can see this infimum. You can see this infimum as minus. Okay, minus the supremum <coughs> of phi f e minus a phi. Okay, you, you just had two minus sign, and you exchange the infimum with the supremum. And here it is equal to the supremum of phi less than f e phi. And this is for the pro proposition that we already proved. This is equal to a 
the infimum of psi larger than f e and psi. This is for um, okay, formal proposition if you want. Okay, and this is uh, uh, precisely this part is uh, the definition of uh, of Lebesgue uh, integral. Okay. Okay, then uh, ah, okay, we have to take care of the sum. So <clears throat> we're always within point i, but now we are um, considering the sum of two of, of two measurable functions. So we have that if you have that psi one and psi two are simple function such that uh, psi 1 is larger than f and psi 2 and psi 2 is larger than g. Okay, then trivially you have that of course the sum of the two simple functions is larger uh, than the sum of the two f and g. Okay, this is trivial. Okay, so we start by considering this part. So we, we prove, uh, as, as often, we prove this equality by showing the two inequality. Okay, okay so this is less or equal than E than psi 1 plus psi 2. Okay, here. You know that for simple function, the linearity holds, and so you can divide this Okay, and then you take the infimum on the right hand side. <coughs> So you take the infimum and I mean of the of the of the right hand side. So this is remains uh, what it is. And so you get So, I mean, uh, you take the infimum over all the possible psi 1 and psi 2 that satisfies this. So, what you get is that at least one side <coughs> is fulfilled. Okay. Okay. Okay, then we, uh, we consider the other side, which is completely somehow analogous. So you start by, by 2, phi 1, and phi 2 are two uh, simple functions Okay, this time uh, phi 1 is less than f, phi 2 is less than g. Okay, you have that trivially phi 1 plus phi 2 is less or equal than f1 plus, uh, no, uh, f and g, uh, uh, g, f plus g. Okay, now you consider instead of uh, the, the infimum, you will consider the supremum. So you have that f plus g, e is larger or equal than e phi 1 plus phi 2. We already proved the linearity for this function. 
So, take the Supremum on the right hand side. Okay, this is an abbreviation for right hand side. And you get what you want. Okay, so at least now we prove <coughs> the step I. Okay, now Okay, let's prove <coughs> step two. Okay, so we start by uh, two functions, f and g, which coincide almost everywhere in E, and we want to prove that this is true. Okay, but in view of, step of the previous step, this is equivalent to prove that f minus g is equal to zero, okay, because of the linearity. Okay, so we have that since f minus g is equal to zero almost everywhere in E, okay, then, of course, if psi is larger or equal than f minus g, then we have that, okay, psi is larger than zero almost everywhere in E, which is completely trivial. So what follows? It follows that psi is larger or equal than zero, which implies that e f minus g must be e larger or equal than zero. Okay, and then you can uh, you can do the analogous for uh, for 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 the function phi, you know, for a phi. So if phi is less or equal than f minus g, uh, which is uh, then, okay, phi is less or equal than zero, almost f in E. And then you have that phi is less or equal than zero, and then you end up with f minus g. Okay, so at the end, you get that f minus g is 0. Okay, then we have to prove the monotonicity. Okay, so we start by two functions which are f is less or equal than g almost everywhere in E, and to prove that the integral over, of f over e is less or equal than this integral as before, this is equivalent to prove that f minus g is equal than zero. Okay, so if, if we have 
a function psi which is uh, less or equal than f minus g, okay, being <coughs> f minus g uh, less or equal than zero almost everywhere in E, then phi is less or equal than zero almost everywhere in E. And so we have that for what we prove, <coughs> this integral is less or equal to zero, and then you get from this that also the integral of f minus g is less or equal to zero. Yeah, about the, the, the absolute values, you also observe that somehow is a consequence of this, uh, this fact. Okay, we are always within uh, three, I, th I think. Okay, so you have that this is always true. Okay. And uh, so this implies that is uh, or minus f Okay, and uh, from those two, you get that. Okay. Okay, then step four, ah, you have this A and B. Okay. Okay, we start by this hypothesis that a, you have a, a constant a, which is less or equal than f of x, okay, for almost everywhere is enough. Okay, then you have that a times the characteristic function of x is less or equal than f of x. But for what we prove for the monotonicity, but for um, step uh, three, you have that a q of a of x is less or equal than f of x. Then you use step one. Mm, no, actually, no, don't use, you use just the fact that we know that for simple function you can do this. And then you know that this implies that this is the, the integral of the characteristic function of E is the measure of E. And so you're done. Okay, for the other inequality is completely is completely similar. So the same for Okay, so what remains to prove is the point five. Okay, so we know that A and B are disjoint. Okay, measurable, of course, and so on. So you have uh, that uh, maybe, okay, you can prove this is very easy, but the characteristic function of the union of two disjoint set is uh, just the sum of the characteristic function of A plus B, okay? Okay, so compute the Lebesgue integral over over this union, and then you know that this is key A union B. Okay, you consider, for example, you can, 
think that this has the integral over in, just to be. This is equal, use this fact, to the E of key A plus E. Well, this inequality. And then for linearity, we know that this is equal to the sum of the two. And then we can come back to the integral of f a plus b f, OK? OK, and then we, we, we prove all the five, uh, all the five statements, OK? Okay, now we will see. Um, okay, we will see now a first example of theorem about about convergence under the sign of integral. Okay, which is one of the main purpose of of, the, of this course. Okay, the name is bounded convergence theorem because you will see that we need uh, to have this maybe quite strong a priori hypothesis that our sequence of function must, must be uniformly bounded by some constant, okay? Bounded convergence. Okay, bound, bound supposition, but I call it bounded convergence theorem. Okay, so we start, of course, by a sequence of uh, measurable function Fn be a sequence of measurable function. Uh, we want uh, them to be defined on a set E of finite measure, so define it, define it on E, set E with measure V finite. We are always under the same um, uh, hypothesis. And as I told you, we assume we require this, uh, this bound. We assume that uh, there exists a constant m positive such that fn of x is less or equal than m for any n. Okay, so it's a bounded sequence and for all x. Okay. Then we have that if f of x, the pointwise limit exists, if of x is the limit of fn of x, uh, for, for almost every x in E, okay, then we can infer a first convergence under the sign of integral. Or namely, we have that the integral of f over e is equal to the limit, as n tends to uh, plus infinity, of, uh, of the integral of fn, OK? OK, we start uh, by just observing that if we have um, more than um, uh, 
um, then a pointwise convergence, if for instance we know for some reason that this convergence is stronger, if for instance it's a uniform convergence, this is, out, this is uh, <coughs> somehow automatic. Automatic, it comes um, at once, so you have that if, so let a particular case, if Fn, in addition, converts to F uniformly. Okay. Then you consider this Fn minus F, which is uh, less or equal than for what we prove Fn minus F. Okay, and this you can bound this by epsilon the measure of v and recalling that if this uniform convergence holds you have that for any epsilon positive there exists an index n uh, such that for any n larger than n bar fn of x is less than f of x less than for any x in e. Okay, but we will see that it's not, um, uh, it's not uh, necessary to, to acquire such a strong convergence. This is, this is enough. Okay, now to prove this, uh, uh, we have uh, to use uh, what we proved before. If you remember, at, at some point we proved uh, a theorem that tells tell us uh, that uh, uh, the pointwise convergence is nearly a uniform convergence outside set of small measure. I mean, the theorem was state, uh, yeah, Egor of Severini. Maybe we, here we would use the, the, the dilemma that, uh, which um, was stated before the theorem, but basically the concept is the same, okay? Okay, so we use the fact, okay, we, we, we proved we proved that we have that for any um, for any epsilon positive and for any delta positive uh, there exists a measurable set A such that the measure of A is small is less than delta this arbitrary number and there exists an integer n such that uh, for any okay for any n larger than this inter than, than this integer f n of x minus f of x is less than epsilon for any x which belongs in E minus this uh, small this set of small measures. Okay, this is, this is what you know. Now, how we can apply this? So we want to estimate the difference between uh, these two, okay? So we take it, the absolute values of these two differences. Okay, first we fix, <coughs> we fix some eta positive, which will play the role of, uh, of an arbitrary small number, okay? So as I told you, we want to estimate this difference. Okay. Uh, okay, this is trivially is less than fn minus f. So now, how would you, how would you go on? How would you split this, this integral? Sorry? E? I mean, we know that there exists some, this set A, so we, we somehow we have to use it, okay? So we will split this in, this, um, the idea is that we split this integral. Yeah, in two, so you, you will split this in E 
minus a, fn minus f, and here you use that here there is a kind of uniform convergence, okay? And in the remaining here, you, here you know nothing about convergence, but you know that at least a is small, okay? So somehow you, 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 you divide these two property, okay? Fn minus f, okay? Okay, now it's just a matter to arrange uh, this, uh, this delta, epsilon, but I mean the idea is the following. So if you take, for instance, if we choose, if we choose, uh, okay, if we choose delta, the delta there equal, it, it is, you can choose any, so you take, for instance, eta divided for m, m was the bound, the uniform bound on, on fn, and then you take and take epsilon, which was equal to eta divided the measure of v times two. So here is crucial that the measure of v is finite because otherwise you cannot divide. And um, okay, so you go on. You have that. Um, okay, what you have? Okay, here we you observe that f n minus f is less or equal than fn plus f, which is equal to 2 times m. Okay, this is trivial. Uh, so you have that this term can be estimated as 2 times m. Um, no, I have, to, no, this can be estimated in this way. This is less or equal than epsilon, because we are there, times uh, the measure of e, okay, you, you can take the measure of e instead of the measure of e minus say because it is it's for sure greater. And in this term, you use the fact that this difference can be bound by two times n. So here comes uh, the fact that you it's it's crucial to, to require that the sequence is uniformly bounded times uh, the measure of a, which is in turn can be bound by by delta, and delta is precisely equal to. Um, eta divided for m. So if you uh, put all uh, no, this choice uh, together, this should be less. This is should be equal to uh, eta over two plus eta over two. So the fact that this is arbitrary small. Okay. So what we found. Uh, If you want to we prove that for any eta positive there exists an integer n such that for any n larger than n positive f minus fn is less or equal than eta. Okay, so we we are done. So now we will define um, uh, the integral, the Lebesgue integral for non-negative function. Uh, so somehow we will um, impose a further restri restriction on the sign of the, of the function, but we will relax the fact that the function in general need not to be bounded, okay? So this is the next chapter is uh, the integral of non-negative function, okay? <coughs> okay, so we consider, we start uh, function f Define an e measure okay with values 
this time on the extended real line. So B, uh, B, uh, measurable function on on E. Uh, okay, we measure. Okay, E must be measurable, of course. This is already included in the definition of measurable function. Okay, how we define the integral definition? Okay, so we define the integral of such an f over e as the supremum over all the function h which are uh, less or equal than f Well, h, what is, this, what is this h? So h um, must be interpreted as an approximate of f from below. It's defined on a with values in 0 plus infinity is not included because we, we want, uh, otherwise we don't know how to compute this. Uh, bounded, so bounded, measurable. Um, what else? And okay, the, the domain definition must be measurable, and the measure of a is uh, must be finite. Okay, so again we have to prove uh, somehow all the machinery, so the, the linearity and so on. Okay, so we have that if uh, we start again, f and g are two measurable function okay, then to um no negative, of course, because. Okay, then if you multiply this function f uh, by a positive constant because we want to remain within the domain of, of positive uh, function, this holds, then, uh, okay, C positive. Okay, if C zero is put us is trivial, and uh, okay, f plus g is equal to the sum of the integral, and finally the third one is the monotonicity. Okay. If uh, um, if you know that f is less or equal than g almost everywhere in e, okay, then the inequality is preserved by, by the integral. Okay. you have cf, the integral of cf is equal to the supremum of ch, which h are those kind of functions, cf, so h less than f of, uh, so you have a ch. So for bounded function you can take uh, this is equal to 
uh, you can take C outside the, the supremum, H less than F, H. And okay, so by definition, this is nothing less than this. Okay, step two. Okay, one side of step two is easy. Uh, so yeah, one one inequality is easy. The other one is a bit a little bit more tricky. Okay, so start by two function h and k. Uh, which are bounded, you have h of x is less or equal than f of x, and uh, k of x less or equal than g of x, okay, where h and k satisfies all the property that we need to, to define the integral, okay? Okay, trivially we have that the sum of hk plus k a k of x is less or equal than f of x plus g of x. Okay, so you have h of x plus e k of x is less or equal than the, okay, now it's equal to the sum And is less or equal than the supremum. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yes. Take uh, define it. Uh, for instance, uh, okay, or rather you can uh, either restrict or just for a sake of simplicity, think that they are zero outside those domains. So I can, I can, I can write e. Okay. I mean, the, the definition is the same, okay? Yes, maybe I should have told you. Um, okay, uh, let, me, let me write um, a little digression here due to your, to your comment. So uh, what I, the definition that I gave before, f, so equal to the supremum of h minus less or equal than f over, over h with, uh, with h, which satisfies all what I wrote. Okay, this definition is equivalent to, uh, to define <laughs> this integral as f has, okay, again, the supremum of h less than f e, this time I wrote e, where uh, over the function h, such that our h is bounded, okay, measurable bounded, and such that uh, the measure where h of x is different from zero is finite, okay? So th this is the set A, basically, set A. So I mean, uh, if, if from time to time I write E in the domain, just, just uh, think of this equivalence, okay? <coughs> okay. Uh, okay, you, now you just, this is less or equal than F plus G. And if you take the supremum, take the supremum on the right, on the left-hand side, take supremum, oh, then you get one of the two uh, inequality. Okay, so to prove the other, we have to work a little bit more. Okay. Ok, 
Okay, so this is one, and this is the other point. Okay, so we consider L a function defined on A. This time we use this, uh, this notation, which is uh, with value in zero plus infinity uh, not included, so it's uh, bounded, bounded, measurable, and with measure of A finite. Okay. Such that we want that this function L, L of X, is less or equal than f of x plus g of x. So L of x should be interpreted as a, a test function that you use to compute the, the integral of f plus, f plus g, OK? OK, then we define the following two uh, function. And we define. OK, we define h of x as the minimum between f of x and l of x. And k of x has l of x minus h of x. OK, what we want to, to, to see now is that h and k are good test function for f and g, respectively. OK, okay. Uh, so what immediately we can say that h of s x by construction is less than f of x because it's, it's, been, it's been defined as a minimum. OK, now what about k of x? OK, for k of x is l of x minus h of x, which is equal. So you have two options. You have that this is l of x minus l of x. If uh, um, l of x is less than f of x, and it is uh, equal to L of x minus f of x, and here you use this one is less than f of x plus g of x minus f of x. <sighs> okay, uh, this is zero, no, of course if uh, uh, L of x, on the contrary, is larger or equal than f of x. In any case, you end up with the fact that k of x is uh, uh, less or equal than g of x. G is not negative, no? So, so, so. OK. OK, then they are good test function. Test function, good, yeah, good test function. They are both, uh, both H and K are um, bounded because they, they are bounded by the same bound for L. Okay, so H and K are bounded uh, by the same bound. L, mm, they are non-negative, and so we can use them as uh, as this function. Okay, uh, so we have that e, the integral of L over e, is equal 
L is the sum of K and H, okay? Is equal to H plus EK, which is less or equal than the integral of F and the integral of G, because we saw that they are good test function. And if you take the supremum on the left hand side, uh, we end up with uh, with the converse inequality, okay? Okay, so we still have to prove the monotonicity. We start by considering the Lebesgue integral of f over e. This is, by definition, we use here the definition, the supremum of uh, e of h. h has less than f. And, uh, okay, call this uh, class of function a f. This is less or equal than the supremum of uh, E of function H, where this time H is less than G, and we call this class as AG. But since F is, is uh, less or equal than G almost everywhere, okay, so... We have that this class is contained in this class, okay? And so here we just wrote the, the integral of V over G. And so we are done. Okay. Okay, now we prove, we will conclude with the Fatou Lemma. <coughs> Fatou. Okay, so you start by a sequence of non-negative function. If n is a sequence of uh, non-negative uh, measurable function, assume that there is pointwise convergence almost everywhere, it's enough. So if n converts to some f of x almost everywhere in the domain, 
Then we have um, the following equality. You have that uh, the integral of uh, the Lebesgue integral of f over e is less or equal than the limit of the integral of f n. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, you have to read this, the, 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 the thesis as the fact that the limit, that the limit of the integral does not need to exist, okay? Uh, okay, so, so we want to use uh, the bounded convergence theorem. So somehow we have to construct some suitable sequence of bounded uh, uh, function which approximates somehow our, our function, our sequence fn, okay? Okay, so we consider <laughs> a bounded and measurable function h function h uh, such that you have that, uh, okay, of course, is non-negative because we are dealing with non-negative function and h is less or equal than f. And assume that h vanishes outside a set e prime of uh, um, Finite measure, okay. This time I use, I, I prefer to use, um, okay, the other definition. Set E prime of, uh, uh, of finite measure. Okay. Okay, then we want to construct uh, this uh, bounded function called MHN. Okay, define HN of X as the minimum between h and fn of x. Okay, first of all, you notice that hn are bounded because h is bounded. This is, def is defined as a minimum between a bounded function and something else, but h is bounded. Okay, so we have that. Uh, um, okay, let me write here. The sequence HN is bounded by, by the bound for H. Okay. And then, okay, we know that HN of X converges to H of X for any x in e prime. Ah, yeah, let me, um, okay, for the sake of brevity, I will prove uh, the, the, the theorem uh, for um, assuming that the convergence uh, uh, also everywhere, but of course, I mean, the set of measure zero where it uh, doesn't uh, also doesn't uh, change much. I mean, it's the set of measure zero, so the integral over set of measure zero are zero, so, okay. Okay, so okay, this is maybe it's easy to see because we have that uh, for any epsilon positive. Uh, so you fi okay, first fix some x in E prime here. So for any epsilon positive, you have that there exists some n bar and bar depending on epsilon and on x uh, such that fn of x 
minus f of x is less than epsilon. So we want to prove this. And uh, no, this is no sorry. This is true by 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 hypothesis. So if we consider this gap between h n and h of x, okay. This is zero if uh, n is such that f n of x is larger than h of x. And this is uh, uh, you have that this is equal h n of x minus h of x. I mean, in this case, uh, you have that h n of x minus h of x is equal to h of x minus f n of x, which is less than h of x minus f plus epsilon minus epsilon. For, uh, for this is for the other case, no? Otherwise. OK, this is just to say that, indeed, you have the point to x convergence of hn of, of hn uh, to h of x to h okay so we can apply the bounded convergence theorem to uh, to this uh, sequence of function so by the bounded Convergence theorem. Uh, what you have? We have that the integral uh, of h over e is equal. You are assuming that it vanishes outside the prime, so this is h. This is equal by the theorem. And the limit as uh, for e prime, for the uh, limit of the integral over e prime of h n. And uh, this is less or equal than the limit of E of Fn. OK, this is um, as infinity. OK, this is because you have that Hn are always less or equal than Fn. OK. And OK, if you take the supremum, take the supremum on the left hand side, OK, then we, we can conclude that the, the thesis is fulfilled. So you have that here. You will have the, the Lebesgue integral of f over e is less or equal than the here you just rewrite the limit and then tends to plus infinity of EFN. Okay? And so we are done. Okay, I think that for today we can maybe stop. Last pro the next time uh, we will uh, we show you some uh, some some example for which the strict inequality holds just to convince you that I mean it's, it's really needed to put a less or equal is not a, is not an equality in general okay so for today I think we can stop